Good morning. Um, I mean, uh, so many of us have been campaigning against this. We were told, oh, it's all a conspiracy theory. They're not going to bring it in. Don't be so stupid. Happened all across Europe. Um, it happened in Scotland, then in Wales. What a surprise it's happened in England. What was your reaction to the news on Wednesday night? Uh, devastated. Um, as many are aware, we've opposed this all the way along. We've uh, They've had two bites of the cherry. And the third bite uh, looks like it's going to be pushed through, but we're not we're not going to uh, just just sit by and allow that to be to to just happen. So uh, you know the government need to understand this is an atrocious decision. The timing is horrendous, um, and also convenient in many respects. So you know it's it, it, it's there's growing anger and frustration across the sector. Absolutely. And again, this is the thing. People say, well, it's just nightclubs and they're not a public support, apparently, for vaccine passports or other measures or even closing nightclubs seems to be rather high. I would think largely by people who don't go to nightclubs, haven't gone to a nightclub in 40 years or never went to a nightclub at all. And I would include pretty much every single person on Sage and all the other government advisors on this. The reality is this is a huge industry. It creates jobs, it pays an awful lot of tax, and it's one of the reasons why people come to this country, tourists come, spend their money. It's it's a key part of our hospitality sector, isn't it? It's a huge part of our hospitality. It turns over £1.167 billion pounds just in nightclubs, uh, £112 billion just in the nighttime economy, 1.94 million people employed. It, it's it's huge. It's bigger than automotive, bigger than fashion, bigger than beauty. So they, they, they really need to, to understand that this, this, is not, this is a huge industry and it's going to be devastating to release this three weeks before the end of the year at a critical point when the industry is so fragile, it is going to have a devastating impact. Yeah. We saw it in Scotland. It normally it knocked off 30 to 40 percent of trade overnight. And, and that's what they have to understand. It's an and and they, they, they knew that would happen. We also know in Scotland they did a, if we had a 70 page assessment of, uh, uh, of a report into, of their assessment into the effect of them. And they found that they had no effect whatsoever in stopping the spread of uh, of covid now at least in in england we've got you can show proof of your vaccine or you can show a proof of a lateral flow test that is negative now i that I will never show my proof of my medical records in this country to go about my normal daily business. I think that's an outrageous breach of my civil liberties. Um, I have shown lateral flow tests, but everybody knows that lateral flow tests are only as good as the person doing the lateral flow test and whether or not they even done it, because you can have a lovely little thing on your NHS app saying you've done a negative lateral flow test. Nice little email when you haven't actually done a test at all. Um, or you give it to someone else to do if you want to do this. Now, um, if you're sensible and you're actually doing a test because you want to keep, uh, you know, you're, you're going to see grandma or someone who's vulnerable or not wanting to pass it on. If you've been in contact with people like, you know, I did lateral flow tests every morning when my daughter had COVID. So I didn't wasn't at risk to colleagues in the office. But but we know that I mean, these are these are I mean, to say they're they're not foolproof is an understatement. Yeah, listen, I don't think anything's foolproof. And I think we all recognise that. I think this is about layering mitigation. But the reality is, Julia, I mean, when, when we saw from the 19th of July, all clinicians, all scientists suggested as soon as hospitality and nighttime economy opened the door, there was going to be this huge rise in, in, in transmissions. And there wasn't. There wasn't. Yeah. We did our job. We did everything we said Absolutely. we would do. And now we feel that we're being punished or targeted at a period which is is just crucial to our survival yeah. for next year. So yeah. it's horrendous timing and, and very frustrating. For How, I mean, I know there is going to be there's a de together declaration. We're going to be uh, talking to the, the, the lead, I guess, on that uh, co-founder, Alan Miller, a little bit later in the show. There's going to be a protest uh, outside Parliament on Saturday at midday. Um, of course, you know, Parliament won't be sitting. Um, we, we obviously, it's just people making their voices heard. But what can people actually do to protest this? Because um, it's very difficult. I'll say, well, I'm not going to show uh, a vaccine passport to get into a, a, a nightclub or, or go to an event that requires it. So, um, but that then then that organ that 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 um, business loses out on on my money, which they they need and, and everyone else's. So, how do we protest this without harming the very businesses we want to protect and maintaining our civil liberties? Well, there's a lot of work that we did before. I mean, we are going to be sitting down with all the different varying opposition uh, and having some robust discussions as we did at the last vote. Um, but I, I think the key thing is, is uh, we, we've got an instrument uh, that we use very readily and we had over 20,000 people 
respond by emailing their MP. And later today, um, we are going to see our email your MP against these restrictions come up again, which we're going to be pushing around. Uh, and we need everyone to take part. You know, the only way to activate um, a, a robust pushback is to to actually activate your MP, your local MP, yeah. and ensure that they're aware of your frustrations. Absolutely. I'm telling you, everybody, MPs really do notice what happens in their, their post bags. They really do in their email inboxes. Just finally, uh, Michael, um, all these stories about these parties, now investigation into three of the parties that took place in number 10 Downing Street uh, in, uh, in November, December last year. November, your whole industry was completely closed down. In December, um, everyone was really, really struggling. Um, we were in tier, well, they were closed again in tier three in in. Last London and in tier four for much of the rest of the time. Um, what was your reaction to the news that basically everyone was having a great time in number 10 while your industry was on its knees? As you can appreciate, people are questioning uh, yeah, the government now. Uh, uh, there is this confidence issue, which I think is resonating around backbenchers and 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 many of the MPs within the Commons. Um, and, and, and for us, you know, for us to be uh, targeted or marginalised as we have done it is it is something that that's not going to be forgotten easily, and particularly at the polls. Absolutely. Oh gosh, I'm I'm going to remember this forever. Thank you so much for joining us. Keep